The sound in this video was processed by Isotope. In this video, everything you wanted to know about XY V2 guitar wireless system. What's the price? What's inside of the box? As always, we'll take a couple of measurements, open the unit, check it with different guitars, and go through all its features. We'll figure out everything around battery and recharging. We'll measure the latency, verify the sample rate, and check the noise level. Test the headroom and compare it to another popular wireless unit. And finally, make some interference tests and try running multiple systems at once. And it's all coming up right now! Hello everyone, here is Max and this video is about x U2 wireless guitar system. First of all, let's take a look at the website. 2.4 GHz. Well, this is important. This means that you can use this wireless system anywhere in the world and you don't need a license, so no extra payments or anything. 5 hours per charge. Over 100 feet wireless range. Well, we're gonna check that later on. Latency less than 6 milliseconds. We can check this too. Okay, how expensive is this thing? If you're in Europe, you can get it from Toman for 129 euros. In the States, um, this is Sweetwater, it is about 155 US dollars. In the United Kingdom, it is about 109, 112 UK pounds. Here's another store, yeah, 109, 105 pounds. In Japan, it is this expensive, and overall, you can also get it from Amazon. So, this is the American Amazon, and the price is about 155 US dollars. So, it's not the cheapest one, but I wouldn't call it expensive compared to other wireless systems. Okay, let's take a look at what's inside of the box. I've got my unit from Warwick, and because of that, it comes with four year warranty. It's a nice box, and it says Made in China on the bottom, right next to all these certifications. Inside, you'll find a manual with Thomas Bluck on its cover, and it is in English. I've also got this warranty card, again, from Warwick, which says you must register in order to get this special offer. And there's another paper with some legal stuff no one wants to read about. There is also the USB cable, standard USB plug to two micro USB plugs, this is for charging, but the charger is not included, so you are supposed to use your own USB charger with it. And finally, there is a receiver, and the transmitter. Is there anything else in the box? No, not really, that's it. Just one more thing, the manual mentioned wireless range about 70 feet. Let's take a closer look. Both transmitter and receiver have this power switch on the side to turn them on or off. Channel select button right next to it. And then on the other side there is a micro USB connector for charging. On the top, if you would call it the top, uh, there are two LEDs. And then on the bottom, there is this rubber pad here, so it's not gonna scratch the surface of your guitar if it touches it. Well, that's it basically, so I guess we can just turn it on and see if it connects. Yeah, so now it's ready to go. And by the way, when you turn it on, uh, it will blink several times, so let's begin with the transmitter. One. Yeah, it blinked one, which means um, it's on channel one. How heavy are these things? 41 gram is going to be the same. Yeah, it's about the same. So we can just go to pounds, or I would say ounces probably would be more appropriate here. A little less than one and a half ounces. Speaking of size. Well, they are not big. Um, you can compare it to a regular 9 volt battery, and it is just a little bit bigger than, than that. 3 inches, or let me open it. 4 and 3 quarters, I guess. 
one and three quarters and uh, something like that. Let's open them and uh, take a look inside. Here we just have a cable which sticks out of here. Okay, now I'm in. Okay, I didn't break anything, which is good. This is how the cable goes out. The biggest part of it is the battery. Finally, here's the battery. 3.7 volts. If you need a replacement battery, this is what you're gonna have to buy somewhere. Well, they've managed to erase all the marks of the DSP, so I cannot tell you what this is, because I'm not an expert. We're in. Oh, that was easy. That was way easier than the first time. These batteries are exactly the same. So if you have an old unit which needs a replacement, this is what you're gonna need. I wonder if they have exactly the same PCB design. Transmitter on the left, receiver on the right. Okay, now that you know what's inside, don't try this at home. This will void your warranty, you can root your unit, and, well, it's just maybe dangerous because of the batteries and stuff. There must be a good reason why U2 has such a sophisticated shape. So, let's try how it works with different guitars. Let's begin with this Dan Electro here. So, I'll just uh, put it in. And, well, okay, so the rubber pad doesn't really help because it's touching the body here, as you can see. But this way, it would probably be better. If you put some Velcro on it, it won't be wobbling like that. That works just fine, like perfectly, <laughs> just as if it was designed to work with a strat. What if I want to turn it around like that? Would that work? Yeah, that will work too. Jack connector here is not very tight, so it's like, uh, it doesn't stay in place. It wants to go somewhere all the time. But if I turn it like this, then it is kind of stable. Or this way, that will work too. Well, I think this is not going to work because it's blocking um, the strap button. But if I turn it around like that... Yeah, that will do. That's well, all my guitars happen to have a connector on the side. So I don't have any guitar with a connector on the front. Unfortunately, yeah. It works the same way just like with any other connector on the side. Okay, now let me plug it in and we'll check how it works. Okay, transmitter is plugged into my guitar, receiver goes into the preamp. Let's turn them on and see if we get any sound. One blink here, one blink here, so now they are connected. Cool, it works. Um, so now my question is, how do we switch channels? Now I need to double press the channel button to activate channel switching. So one, two, and it tells me I'm on channel one, channel two, 
so we see that now it is disconnected I press it once again channel 3 2, 3, 4, channel 4 okay so now let's do the same with the receiver double click okay channel 1 channel 2 channel 3 channel 4 and now we are connected so let's see if we still have any sound yes we do so now I want to go back to channel 1 so I have to double click it again we're now on channel 4 channel 1 and we're back online so yeah it is easy to use one switch and one button that's all you have now I'm curious if it can be charged and used at the same time because well the problem with the built-in battery is that at some point uh, it runs out so if you're in the middle of the gig and your battery is low there is no way to change a battery so you need to recharge it uh, it's not like a, a regular wireless device where you could just put another pair of double-A batteries and you're good to go no you need to recharge it and this is something that I don't like because in a real-life situation you would need to have a quick solution just you know quickly changing batteries works recharging batteries is not quick by any means so let's see if it can be charged and used at the same time because if it is so then it somehow solves the problem so I have this Y cable which comes with U2 and the other side of it is already plugged into the USB charger it doesn't say anything but I assume it is charging do we still have any sound? yes we do so in case if you run out of batteries you can probably just use something like this like a power bank you know you could just plug it into your transmitter and then you are good to go for another I don't know hours or days with this because this thing lasts really long to check the battery life of U2 I've performed another test so basically first I've charged them both to 100% and then used my watch to figure out how long they will last and the transmitter turned off first after 8 hours 5 minutes which is a very long time uh, well longer than any regular geek and receiver worked for 9 hours 45 minutes which is a very very long time but here's the thing the longer you use U2 the worse the battery will become and let's say in a year or two instead of I don't know eight hours it may only last for six or five or even less than that and if you forget to charge it before the gig then it can run out during the show and there's nothing you can do about it uh, it's not a battery that you can change quickly as a as it is with regular wireless systems and um, this is something I don't really like because it's not reliable in this way you can't really control the battery life and uh, you're gonna have to charge it every time before the show don't forget about this in the next test I tried to figure out how much time does it take to charge both U2 transmitter and receiver to 100% and because we've completely discharged them during the previous test I simply plugged them both into my USB charger which is um, let me show you that which is a standard Samsung travel adapter uh, British version and it provides two amps as you can see two amps and again I used my watch to measure the time and uh, for the receiver it took one and a half hours for transmitter a little bit longer one hour about 43 minutes something like that that would be charging time for the X-Wife U2
the latency test is fairly simple. I will send some sound into this splitter right here, and then output A goes back to the audio interface, and uh, I will connect transmitter into the output B, and the receiver into this coupler here, and back to the audio interface. One path, the A path, will go directly to the audio interface, the B path will go to the audio interface through the wireless interface, and we can measure the latency then. Yeah, something like that. 477 samples, which makes 5 milliseconds, which is a lot. Well, let's compare it to another device from Line 6, which is Relay G30. This is an old school Line 6 wireless interface. Okay, we're good. Yep. Oh, wow. This is unexpected. I thought it's going to be less than that, but it's uh, 463, which is 463. A little bit less, but still more than I expected. So it's going to be G30. Okay, let's try G70 now. Okay, we're connected. Okay, now look at this, 141, which makes 141, uh, which is one and a half milliseconds. Well, that's what you pay for, because uh, G70 is I don't know how, how expensive it is, but it's definitely at least twice as much as U2. Now, why do I say that 5 milliseconds is a lot? On its own, it's not much, but you surely will be using U2 together with other devices. Some of them may be digital, and the latency simply adds up, and as soon as it's more than 15 milliseconds, it will no longer be enjoyable to play. And more important, you will never be on time with the rest of the band. So a latency of 5 milliseconds for a single device is not critically bad, but I would say it is on the edge of acceptable. For the frequency response test, I will be using True Selector, which has two loops, A and B, and uh, there is a patch cable in the loop A, so the sound simply goes through. And uh, U2 is connected into the loop B. Let's turn it on. Good, we have the link, we're ready to go. I will switch between them in the process and we will see the difference. Um, here on the left side I have a white noise sample and a frequency analysis window. I'll just hit the record button and we'll see what happens. Now that the sound goes through the patch cable, you can see that the whole frequency spectrum goes through. Let's switch to the wireless. Um, the high end is getting cut at around 24 kHz, which means that internally U2 runs at 48 kHz as described. Let's go back to the patch cable. The high end is back and it gets cut off when I switch to the wireless. Okay, now I want to check how noisy U2 is compared to uh, a wireless system that I use on a regular basis, which is really G70, you can see it right here. I'll turn everything like to maximum to make sure that the test is consistent. Let's turn this on and you can see that the current level is about minus 40 something, yeah, minus 40 dBs. So let's now turn this on. The volume is off. Okay, so this is the amount of noise we are getting right now. It is about minus 35 dBs. It's not really affected by the position of my guitar. Good. So you can hear that the sound is going through actually. Now, what if I turn it off? Will that change anything? 
Okay, there is still something. And you can hear that there is some buzz. This is because this device here is not shielded. Okay, let me do the opposite. I will now turn off the transmitter. It's supposed to be absolutely silent, but it isn't. We're getting minus 38 dB's noise. Um, now let's swap to my Line 6 wireless. The transmitter is off, so now it's just the receiver. And uh, the amount of noise is significantly lower. It is at minus 54. Good, so now what if I turn this on? All right, so we're now connected. And the noise is at minus 50 dBs. Yeah, the sound is going through. All right, minus 50 with volume down. Okay, now let's swap. Okay, you can hear that, right? Yeah. There's way more noise. Is it critical? At high gain? Definitely. If you play clean or crunch, you can probably leave with that, but generally it is noisier than I wanted it to be. Okay, let's swap back to Relay 70 and uh, check the difference once again. So now it's about minus 35. And now we're about minus 50. So there is 15 dBs difference in noise between Line 6 Relay G70 and X5 U2. I had this sick idea of using XYFU2 for wireless monitoring, and for that I needed to know if it can take higher input levels, not instrument levels, but line level signals, so to speak. Um, so I just connected it to my phone. Let's turn it on. And this one goes to the audio interface. Okay, I think now it should be working. And let's play something through it and see if it works. It's not very loud, but it's clean. I mean, there is no distortion or anything. Good, it works! For the wireless range test, I've decided to build a pedal board, or maybe I should call it a pedal strap. I'm using AMT R2 preamp because it has three independent outputs. I will be comparing the U2 wireless system to Line 6 Relay G30, which is an entry-level wireless device from Line 6, and it is supposed to have a comparable wireless range. So I have both transmitters connected to different outputs of my preamp, and on the receiver side I have G30 running off a power bank. Both receivers are then connected to a mobile recording device. Okay, let's check if there is any signal. Yes, there is, so we can go straight to the test. I will leave both receivers right next to this red-white pole and walk away. As both transmitters are on my back, there's always a clear line of sight to the receivers, with no obstacles whatsoever.
Now if I turn around and walk back towards the receivers, the radio signal has to go through my body, and the connection is getting lost immediately. As I'm getting closer, U2 is trying to reconnect. Both systems go back online at approximately the same distance, with you two experiencing a few more little dropouts on the way. Overall, U2 indeed has a stable connection up to 70 feet. One more thing I want to check with my phone is the interference between U2 and wireless networks. As you can see, I have Wi-Fi Network Analyzer app open on my phone, and there are many Wi-Fi networks here on different channels. So I'm curious what is going to happen when I turn on the U2. Okay, it's on, there's a link. Now let's just wait and see what happens. Well, as you can see, a few seconds later, only the strongest networks managed to survive the interference. So this is something you want to keep in mind if you're going to be using XY View 2 with some other Wi-Fi related devices. Speaking of interference, we have already checked how XYV2 works together with Line 6 Relay G30 during the wireless range test. But what about the new generation of Line 6 devices? I have Relay G70 right here, and the transmitter is connected to my guitar. Let's turn it on. And XYV2 goes from my Dan Electro guitar here to V1 preamp. Well, let's begin with but this one. Well, apparently XYV2 works just fine with Relay G70 and they can be used at the same time. Okay, but what if I have two XY wireless systems? Would that work? Well, the manufacturer says up to four systems can be used at the same time. So let's swap this Line 6 for another XY V2 and check it out. Okay, we're good to go. <laughs> Well, as you can see, they work together just fine. Okay, and here's a recap. I have verified the official specs and they are correct. U2 has a wireless range of up to 70 feet, the latency is about 5 milliseconds, and it runs internally at 48 kilohertz. Speaking of pros and cons, it is very convenient and easy to use, it has a good headroom and can handle higher input levels, the battery lasts long, but there is no way to quickly change it or use standard batteries instead. The unit is noisy, and there is also 50 cycle hum because of plastic enclosure, and the latency could be lower as well. Overall, it's a good value for the money. I wouldn't recommend it for professional use, but for small gigs or rehearsals it will definitely do the job. Hey, thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, hit that subscribe button right there, and don't forget about the bell button to get notifications every time I'm posting a new video. A special thanks goes to people in the list below. Those are my patrons. If you want to say thanks, hit the button on the left and join the list. Well, that's it for now. 
have a good day and I'll see you soon.